In the previous video, we saw how we can get different effects using animation inside After Effects. And uh, we worked with mainly with vector graphics, but also we started to apply the first effects. And this is just um, a quick example. We can animate basically anything, any parameter, including the styles or the, the, the opacity, the blending mode, so we can replay a lot with the software. One other important switch that we used is the motion blur. So we can enable and disable motion blur. Using motion blur will give you a more realistic sense of uh, movement with your object. So you can see here that this object here is moving really fast and the faster it's gonna move, the, the more the motion blur effect I will have. Now we already specified that this is also happening in reality. Now I wanna create a new composition so that we can, um, and I also created a new uh, project for the new lesson, 11. So I'm gonna create a new composition and I wanna apply here a uh, new layer and I want to use um, solid layer. Now in this video, we're going to talk about color, color correction, and in general, how we can, again, work with animation and uh, also green screen and a lot of effects related to color. So let's start, get started with the simple like shape here. And so if I animate this, if I want to see the motion blur, let me just um, animate by activating here the position key. This is one way we can animate also from the properties panel. And then I will move here and extend my layer. I will not zoom in and then move this right here. So once we have this line, this represent keyframes and also represent the speed. So this is kind of going really slow. So it's difficult to have uh, um, a motion blur effect when objects are moving slower. So if I make this more um, close to each other, you see the, the keyframes are more spaced and this means the object is going to be quicker and faster. So if I activate now the motion blur here and here, I will see the motion blur. Now another way that you can uh, manage this is to go inside the composition settings. Here we have advanced settings and in the advanced settings, if we go down, you can see we have shutter angle and shutter face. So if I change these parameters, these are gonna affect the, the amount of blurriness of the motion blur. And also you can increase the quality by increasing the samples per frame. And that's how we can, again, manage the effect even more. Now, if I slow this down, you can see the more I slow this down, the less I'm gonna see the, the motion blur effect. Now I wanna bring this layer into the other composition. I can either insert the entire composition or I can copy and paste this track. So Control C, you can copy and paste basically anything. Tracks, keyframes, uh, videos, clips from other uh, uh, works, other projects. So what I'm gonna do here is just paste this right here. So Control B and using a solid layer, we can also make this bigger. It's the first way we can play with color and color alteration, color correction. How do we do that? Well, it's simple, using the blending mode. So if I blend this, I'm gonna have a different effect. And if I see here, I have, as we already saw before, we have like um, blending modes that are gonna make things darker or they're gonna make things uh, more bright or they're going to invert the color or use, um, at, um, increase saturation of the color or uh, change the luminosity or apply the color to the, the overall uh, image or it, it, is, it can subtract the, the color and this is kind of the opposite color of the blue or you, it can exclude a color or make the difference. So basically it's uh, working with the rest of the image and the pixels that they are on the background. So one first way, again, we can work with colors is using solid layers and uh, lightning modes, which can be also animated in terms of position. And I can also like place this on the, the overall image. And also you can animate blending modes. So if you go here, well, in this, in this case, uh, since we this is not an actual effect, I cannot um, animate it, but we're gonna see how we can do it. 
basically we need to apply an effect that's the other way we can work with a color correction here so let's look for a gradient which is the four color gradient so if i apply this four color gradient to my layer here that's going to be applied on top of that and this works with the blinding mode as well so if you want to see it like uh, standard we just need to go here to normal this is the standard four color gradient and if i go back ctrl z this is because i'm blending using the pin light so if you want you can also use another blending mode that is gonna like apply on top of that and make things a little bit different and you can see this is using yellow green magenta and uh, blue so again we can play around mix alterate the image or try to do some color correction with this and we can animate so if i click here then i can animate the blending mode so perhaps i can start here with uh, normal blending mode or add and then this could become something else here it could be like darken and then you can change more so that's another thing you can animate blending modes and that's just the beginning because you can then apply effects and more advanced effects that we're going to see now before we start again let's review the basic things about colors so we're using pure colors which are rgb this is our color system red green and blue now all these colors have their opposite so the green the opposite of green is magenta the opposite of blue is yellow the opposite of red is cyan and then all the way around so when you're balancing color the less red you're gonna um, produce and then the more cyan you will have in a reaction so it, they are opposite so yellow becomes blue vice versa now another important things to know is hsl hsb we already explained a little bit of this but essentially we when we work with colors we work with you so we can change dramatically the color with the saturation we can make it black and white if we go to zero percent or we can increase the intensity of the color if we go to 100 percent and then we have brightness so we work on the darker areas the brighter areas we can increase decrease the lighter and the brighter areas and then we have the mid tones so we have highlights uh, dark spots and mid tones and this is also sometimes called hsl or can have other names we also have a four channel we already explained it's a alpha channel which uh, again works with uh, black so dark areas white bright areas and then mid tones which are grays and they are like uh, not so so transparency but something in between transparency and opacity now we also talk about the beta color this is also really important where now we're working with 8-bit but we can change it we can, we can have more colors but uh, we're going to increase also the yumminess of the scene and you see that right now we have 8-bit which means ab about uh, 16 million colors now we also have color profiles now every screen every um let's say device has a different way to show you colors so an image could look different in two different screens because they use different color profiles now let's go back in our composition you can see here that i've used this four color gradient and you have a 16 number here and 32 number here and if we check other they probably have the eight as a number now that means if the effect will be supported by that um with by that project or not so um also you can if you don't have this panel open you can open it from the window panel and you you need to look for the effects and presets and also this one here effects control also really important to control and manage the effects so um if I go in edit and in the sorry in file and go to project settings this is where we can manage the settings of the project and if I go into color here I can change the bit depth so if I increase this I probably have a better result which is probably not going to be visible to the naked eye but it's going to be uh, better one way or the other because we, you're going to have more colors so more variations but you cannot use like effects that only can support like 16 bits so be careful here what you choose otherwise some of these cannot be used and also 
you have uh, here the LUTs, the gamma, and the working color space. So if you click here, you can see that I can apply like Apple RGB, and the image is going to look a little bit different. So let's apply it like this and wait. Yeah, definitely different. Well, sometimes it's uh, pretty visible, sometimes it's really subtle, and you would not notice the difference. But you have that option, you can change color profile. Now you see up here you have an attention or caution sign or signal, and it's telling me that what I would just explain to you. So this effect only supports 8 bit and 6 bit. You can use it, you cannot use it with 32 bit. So be careful on the project settings that you're gonna leave behind. So I wanna have 8 bit, I don't wanna have 32 bit. So that it's not gonna give me a problem now. Now you can also click this and deactivate it from here. So you can turn the effect on and off. And also I'm seeing here the other effect from the, the first um, solid layer that I've applied. Now to deactivate that, I can click here and that's gonna be turned off as we already know. But it also has an effect so I can click and deactivate the effect as well. And so I can work directly here in the timeline tracks or I can work in the management here. Now um, let's go in the video right here on the on the background and let's say that I want to apply a color correction directly into that image. Now to do that I want to go to effect and you have a lot of effects here about color correction. Now these effects are the same that you will find here so if you search for, for example, auto color, there it is. And uh, sometimes uh, when I don't have time, I can uh, work with this automatic adjustment. So I, I don't wanna like go there and adjust it myself. I'm just gonna apply like auto color, auto contrast, auto labels. And that's gonna like fix the image a little bit or the video in this case. So that's one quick fix you can do. And then uh, you also can adjust this yourself manually. So I'm going to close here. So if you search for something particular, you can search from there. Or you can go directly here. There you go. So for example, if I want to do the levels, which are really important, uh, not like automatically. So I'm going to turn off the auto levels. I want to do it myself. I will go to effect, call correction, and look for levels. And you can see the levels, they work with dark, dark areas, bright areas, and mid-tones. So if I click here and I bring this up, I'm going to have more darkness in the darker areas. If I click this and bring it down, I'm going to have more brightness in the brighter areas. And then I can balance this with the mid-tones. So I can have this effect or this other. Now this also depends on the... Uh, image that you have or the video. So if it's a raw video, it's gonna have like the top quality and you can have a lot of uh, variation, a lot of information about that video. Otherwise, usually you're gonna have a compressed video. So basically you are just gonna have less um, information to work with, but you see it's working pretty fine. Now, let me turn this off. Another advanced, and I wanna also like make this more compact. Now, by the way, all these uh, uh, parameters here can be animated. So every time you see this uh, clock, you can animate the that particular effect. So let me apply another one, which uh, is one of the most important and basic. And then you have a lot of those. I cannot go through all of these, but once you understand you can go yourself and experiment and I definitely suggest to you to go there and you know play around with this. So start with the automatic and then try to do something yourself. So another one really important is curves. Now again this works with RGB or red, green and blue. So I can work with all of them or I can work using the the single layer. So this is the red. So if I increase the red dark areas here and bright areas here on the top and the, the mid-tones in the middle. And if I decrease, for example, here the mid-tones, 
I'm going to have the cyan, which is the opposite color. Same thing goes for the green. So if I decrease the green, I'm going to have magenta. If I increase the green, I'm gonna, everything is going to turn green. Or I can say, OK, I just want to have more green in the midtones and less greens in the darker areas, more greens in the brighter areas. So you can really like specify for each color, each channel, which one you want to like um, enhance and which one you want to like decrease. And they all have their opposites. Now there are a lot of tutorials and that you can find to how to use curves and levels, not only in After Effects, but also in Photoshop, because these are really similar to the effects that you have in Photoshop or adjustment layers. So what is an adjustment layer? We didn't use an adjustment layer, so everything went directly into the original video right here. So I can also open this up and go there and find all the effects that I have been applying and I can modify them, I can animate them, I can turn them on and off from here. So I can select from here or from here, or I can turn every effect off like this. So I can see also the pre the before and after. Now there is another really important feature here, which is again the adjustment layer. So if I go to layer new and go to the adjustment layer. Now that's a layer that is basically working only with adjustment. Now let's apply something that is visible. So let's go to color correction again. Let's go over here on the top and let's go like to black and white. Now black and white would make everything black and white. So this is really visible. And if I push this layer up, so if I click and drag it up to the top, it's going to affect everything that's in my scene. So this is why these are really handy, because I can decide which layer I want to affect. And if I want to affect everything, I'm just going to place that on the top, or just decide where it's going to be. And in this case, it's only affecting the image there. Also, another uh, purpose of the adjustment layer is if I move this here, I can see, again, like the before and after. I can see with the effect and without the effect. Now I can turn off the black and white. Let me show you something more. So if I uh, go here, effect, color correction, I'm going to show you like brightness and contrast. This is pretty self-explanatory. You can change color or change two colors. So if I change color, I can select a color in the scene, for example, the blue or the, the gray there in the background, and I can change it changing the U, I can make it another color, or I can change the lightness. Be careful not to exaggerate, otherwise you will see like some bad artifacts. Or I can, let me just go back here and color correction. So I can change specific colors. I can, uh, let me see here, equalize, use saturation. You see, we, we always talk about the same stuff. Photo filter also, really interesting. So now it's applying a warming filter. You can see again the before and after. And then you, you have cooling filters, or you have yellow, deep red, or you can design your own color here. So you go to custom, apply your own color, and also change the intensity. So play a lot with the parameters here. Again, you can animate this. So if I go here, I can animate, for example, the density and make it from zero to 100%. And that's gonna be animated. I can play that back and see the animation. Now, what I can do is also animate that just as I animated the solid layer first. So I can move this around and animate it. And I can, of course, rotate it, transform it in all the ways that we already know. Now, you can also do another really interesting thing with this. You can also use a mask. So let me just fit this so we can go inside this adjustment layer, use the pen tool or any other graphic design or vector graphics design tool. And you can see that if I select 
this adjustment layer is going to activate the mask automatically. So I can now start to click here and try to define like an area. Now you can do this with the corners or you can change it, you can make it curve with Bezier as we already know. So I'm just going to go and now I'm going to go outside and close this shape. Okay, now you can see that once it's closed, the effect now it's only going in the part that I have uh, indicated with the mask. So let's expand this and that's the mask. You can also invert the mask to invert the effect or you can change and like deactivate the mask or try with other effects of the mask. Otherwise, it's going to be add uh, in the add mode. Now, once I have the mask, I can go back to effects control here and I, I can also use black and white and try with the other and isolate a color or an area. You can also be more precise with the mask. I just go really quick here. Now I want to proceed with some images from Pexels. I want to have a green screen image that I'm looking for here in the Pexels. So basically you can remove quickly a color and do a photo montage or a video montage in um, using um, After Effects, just like in Photoshop. Or you can remove a background if it's a, like a green background or something that is really different from the rest of the image. So I'm going to use your, uh, let's see, I, I want to use kind of a flat screen like this. And then I want to show you here, like with a flat background, we can work with an image like this. And um, this one here, or uh, this one here. And then also this other one here which has a green background and I can download here freely. Just click on download and it's going to download it from Pexels. Now I want to proceed with some images from Pexels. I want to have a green screen image that I'm looking for here in the Pexels. So basically you can remove quickly a color and do a photo montage or a video montage in um, using um, After Effects, just like in Photoshop. Or you can remove a background if it's a, like a green background or something that is really different from the rest of the image. So I'm going to use your, uh, let's see, I, I want to use kind of a flat screen like this. And then I want to show you here, like with a flat background, we can work with an image like this. And... Um, this one here or uh, this one here and then also this other one here which has a green background and I can download here freely just click on download and it's going to download it from Pexels. So let's go to file and I'm going to import the, the first file here so it's going to be this one and um, I want to create a new composition from selection. Okay, so here, essentially we have a nice background that I can remove or I have some colors that I can work with. So if I go to effects directly into the image, let's try, for example, the change to color. So I can select here. Oh, you can also delete by deleting with the delete key. So I can select this color and I can make it another color. Now be careful because this is gonna also change by using these other settings down here. So you can change the lightness, the saturation, the softness. So this could be like straight or could be more, uh, you know, less visible. And of course, if the color is also on the image, that's going to affect also the image. So be careful with that. And you can also see this also in the, with the green screen. So the green screen needs to be like well um, 
create it, otherwise it's going to give you problems. Okay, so this is affecting now all that like gray in the whole image. I want to affect like the blue and turn it like more green. So you can see here the change. And again, I can increase even more the, the hue. So the intensity of the color and work with the lightness. And there you go, so that's zero. Saturation, softness. So it's just a matter of like playing out and do again, color correction or color alteration. Let me bring in another file here, which is going to be the screen. And I wanna create a composition right away with this. There you go. So when I have a precise color like this, what I can do is use a specific effect, which is called key light. So I'm going to look for key light in the effects. I'm going to click it and drag it directly here on, on the composition, or in this case, the track. And here I just click the color that I want to remove, which is going to be that green. Now, if I get back in the project panel and I get the other composition here and I bring it down here Let, let's make some more space by deactivating some of the uh, tracks uh, columns so you can see that the video is right there on the back so I can place it can see it's not gonna appear outside that green area it's like I created a cutout a window that and then I can see like through that window and I can apply whatever I want and now I want to bring in the last file here so this uh, guy there you go and well it just created another composition with this but I didn't want to do that I just want to go back to the previous composition I want to bring that in directly inside here to test the the green screen again and be careful the the track if it's uh, long enough and let me also want to rotate this like slightly oh not that so select that and rotate it slightly okay and then move it like right here and well, in this situation, uh, let's see what happens if I apply a key light and click to, sorry, not that, that one, click. And there you go. Now you, you see some transparency because the green go also a little bit on that cap. So probably before we work with key light, we need to adjust this a little bit. So it's not a perfect green screen. We need to adjust it one way or the other. So this could be done perhaps with a, a color substitution effect, like change color. So if I, and I wanna use this before the key light. Also the, the, the sequence here, they work like layers. So this, this is gonna go like first, change color and then apply key light. So they have like a sequence. So it's really important how you organize them in the uh, effects control. So I'm gonna select the color to change which could be the, the green here, and could be even more like greener and completely like um, different from. And you can see that the green is also going partially on the on the guy there. So it's, it's a more difficult situation. Yeah, you can see now it's taking less off because uh, well we want to go like more into green let me try with the change to color so effect color collection and let's go to change color i want to select this and i want to make it uh well i'm just gonna select your really green one and increase the u but be careful not to go on top of that and let's bring it up and activate key light 
yeah, we still need to, to work this around. Now we can also work with the screen gain and screen balance a little bit. And see if we can like manage somehow to, to bring this out of there. We can also reset everything anytime and like start all over and see if you get better effect. Probably I need to change also the color of the cap and uh, the, the color of the hood because I can see some transparency there, but now it's looking a little better. So let me try here to change this uh, yellow hat into something else. And I want to also apply um, brightness and contrast, make this like a little darker. So perhaps I can hide more the the, the transparency there of the hood and yeah I can play around with this more until I find the, the thing that I'm looking for and then perhaps I can apply a uh, last adjustment layer to everything like tint so uh, effect and let's go for tint so you have many ways you can play around with this uh, color correction and adjustment layers, coloring and uh, stuff to just play around. And this is going to be it for this uh, video. If you enjoyed, please subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support us, please um, join the channel as a supporter. And See you in the next video.